So, today we're trying a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to be designing some posters for my music league live on YouTube. I am doing this kind of uh, pretty lightweight on my own right now. Just like last minute, wanted to get it out. Didn't want to make a big like planned release or anything like that. Just because it's an experiment. This might blow up in my face. Um, so... It's a little nerve-wracking, A, to design in the open, but um, yeah, I'm uh, kind of in Bali on the other side of the world from where I normally am. I'm uh, living here right now currently, and I feel a little disconnected from my design people and my community and everything. And so this, I thought, was like a nice way to do something fun, to design something that has very little stakes. Today, I just want to like, you know, this is being recorded on YouTube. Um, hopefully we can have some fun chats if people come along. And if not, this is just going to be me walking through my design process on this, where it will live in a, an empty place on YouTube forever. But hopefully not. Hopefully we get some like fun things and conversations going as we go on. I'm just going to go here for like maybe a couple hours, walk through my process, maybe talk about like some design approaches, some music type of stuff, maybe get into some politics or some other weird topics that come out as we talk through this because all of this stuff is connected. Design, politics, music, um, community, social things like that. And I think this is just like a fun way to, to maybe experiment and like not feel so away from everything on the other side of the world. So. I'm really kind of doing this for me, less for everybody, but this is kind of a, you know, fun thing anyway. So here we go. So this is the first thing. I'm getting used to some software, and <laughs> I had this, the wrong uh, theme set up. I'm using Streamlabs, so I think we got this now. Looks like we are actually live here. Let's get designing. So first thing we're going to look at like what is music league what is this whole thing about so first of all music league is this great little application uh it is a, a little app where you can get together a group of friends there's a mobile app there's the website or whatever but you get your group of friends together and every week you have a theme for a playlist and so this first half, you're submitting songs, whatever songs you think will match that theme the best. You can write a comment about why you submitted it. And then the second half of the week, you get a playlist in Spotify it generates. You don't know who submitted each song or why, but you go through and you have the second half of a week to vote on, you have 10 points to vote on what song is your favorite. So I can show you, this is our league. I call it the Global League of Professional Amateur Musicologists. Um, I have, it's, there's 30 people in this league. Uh, we've had up to, and overall, I think there's been about 40 people that have been involved through various seasons. We've done season four. So each season, I try to limit to between 12 and 16, I think, uh, weeks or sessions and so this last one was season four as an example uh our first round this year was two first so two songs and one think like bohemian rhapsody but don't choose bohemian rhapsody the person who chooses this theme is whoever won the last round so this is our good friend brian Greeley who came up with this round last year and so basically we had a few days to come up with this theme here and uh, November Rain won this one. It's got that great transition between two, two uh, different types of music, like a clear transition from one part of the song to the next. And so our friend Care won it. And so you can see who voted on all these each week. She won this round and got to choose our next theme. And along the way, as you like vote, you can you know, make little comments. We all each get 10 points to decide how we distribute it. So in the end, this app, it's, it's kind of fun. It's sort of silly, but it is, I don't know. It's just a great way to have community. Um, the part that I like to build on, I like to make it, I like to add like a few little house rules. Uh, 
We also have a chat in Signal that's for the community so we can banter, we can heckle each other. We also, it ends up being a great way to share when shows are on, like in real life, so we can see them and just kind of stay connected as a kind of fun little community gathering around something we love, which is music. Um, and so at the end of every season, I host a little award ceremony where we'll go to a bar. Um, I will give out prizes based on a few things like most voted song, who the winners are, that kind of thing. Um, and so as part of this, the top three winners of the overall get three posters that I design. Or each person gets a poster. So on each of these posters, um, I like to take one of the songs they submitted and especially I try and find something that hopefully meant something to the person a little bit extra. So, you know, when you submit, you can often write like a little, um, just a little comment. So Natasha like submitted this one here for the song. Hello. While the song is called hello, it's actually about saying goodbye. So this, sometimes people add like a nice little tidbit. So I try to find some, a song that meant something to somebody who, whoever won it, um, I like to pick something that I'm going to enjoy designing and something hopefully that has some like good lyrical content in it that maybe, you know, just says something that, you know, is easy to design because I like to take a lyric, make it into something, connect it with something that means something to somebody. So they get a, a nice artifact that, you know, they have some kind of connection to, not just a random design. So in this season we have our top three people who won the most points across the thing we've got phil in first place kq kevin who got second and then chris galloway in third so these are the three people i'm going to be making posters for this season um phil has been around a couple seasons he's, he hasn't won top three yet so it'll be a new poster for him this was KQ's rookie season, so I think he also gets a Rookie of the Year prize, which will come up. And then Chris, this is third. He's actually, Chris is like our league champion. I don't know how he does this, um, but he has won top three in all four seasons so far. He's the only one who has done this. He's won uh, two first places, I believe a second place and a third here. Let's see. We're going to have a look at, uh, let's see, I put, I put these all on my site, my little portfolio site here. Um, so you can see the whole batch. Um, let's see here. Okay. So I'll show you all the previous seasons just to get an idea of what I'm talking about here. So this was the first season. It was the longest season. I think we had, maybe we had 20 rounds or something for this. Um, Chris won first place. And so one of the songs he picked was uh, Release, Release the Pressure by Left Field. In his comment, he just talked about like how um, important that song was to him. It was just a meaningful song and this type of music was like really important to him growing up. So I wanted to use this one in particular. It wasn't necessarily a winning song or anything like that, but it was something that meant something. So I want it to be something that he would feel, you know, pretty happy about hanging on his wall. Um, we had Bim uh, won second place and Matt won third with Japandroids. So this was, Chris won first this first season. Second season, Chris also won with Larry Hurd. And can you feel it now? Can you feel it? And Larry heard th this is where like house music developed in Detroit. So again, another like very impactful thing. The TR 909 is the drum machine used on the track. Also very influential in this type of music. Um, and then I, you know, used the actual like um, patterns in the drum machine pattern as sort of like this you know, a way, in, there, because there's not much for lyrics in it, I used that instead to sort of, you know, tie it to the content of the song. And as you can see, these other ones, I really liked to Natasha, who is uh, Bim's uh, partner, life partner. Um, 
she won with Feist with uh, this beautiful song. And the, the music video for this has this crazy sea monster attacking a fisherman in a boat. And it's with puppeteers and everything. This is just this beautiful thing. And so it's mi mixing this imagery of bees and honey with the, the actual content of this horrifying song uh, story that the song is about, about a fisherman going out to sea and being basically eaten by a sea monster. And then we have uh, The Coup. So my friend Luke got this song. We got the guillotine. And like for me, this is one of my favorite posters of the of the league. It was just about um, just just the imagery of a guillotine in itself had fun with like the little cutout in the bottom. And so this one came really quick to me. I love it. It's still one of my favorites. Um, and then this last season, uh, season three, Chris got uh, third place again. So two thirds and two firsts. And so he submitted La Tigra, this great song just had, I just loved the, um, the thought of a gasoline gut with a Vaseline mind and just built the, the lyrics around that, tried to make, the colors kind of nice and bright and fit in with his other ones because i kind of want if you're if you're if if you're gonna have all these posters on your wall uh i want them to fit together maybe as a bit of a series and, and work together um uh laurie who is a newcomer this season got second another like rookie of the year and brad boyce won this one and so this was a uh, slow dive um Suvlaki Space Station. So I just wanted to make it's got some really dark lyrics like curse your soul. I don't want to know you. It's but a, a beautiful song as well. Um, oh, yeah. And so Lori's was this Alt J Taro, which is a sad story about a photographer um, dying during, I think, the Vietnam War or one of the wars. And uh, it's about this, th their lover and death and war and it's a very tragic story so um it just you know felt kind of fun to do like a little skeuomorphism like make this the film in a camera with a hand holding a broken camera of someone who just died in war as a war photographer so this is sort of like the areas that i'm trying to go for um here's some nerdy stuff at the end of the league, like, it's not just about the winners. I'll try to make sure everybody gets a prize of some sort. So, like, this, you can't really see this here, probably. But let's see if I just jack up that zoom here a little bit. Um, I try to, I can't, I can't zoom this over. Anyway, I try to do, like, candies or whatever. And just, just to make sure, like, people walk away from it. It's not just about winning the whole thing. I'll have... Uh, prizes for most comments or like highest voted song things like that um oh hey james uh love to love to see you. it's been a while we gotta like catch up um so in addition to these i the nice thing about the music league app is it lets you export all the league data so i get real nerdy here and just like bring in all this like the submissions the comments the votes and like the, the comments that come in with the votes. And I just make a bunch of pivot tables here to figure out like who like who is <laughs> who's had the most votes on a song, like just all these fun little stats here, how many points total they had. Um, just um, try to, to just try and distill like what other categories can we have fun with with comments. And so uh, the, usually what we'll do is we, we'll rent out a bar. I'll do this ceremony. We'll play some games. Um, and it's just a great time. So this year, season four, um, unfortunately, I'm way on the other side of the world for this one in Bali. Um, so normally I like to give myself like a month or two to design posters. And then we have the award ceremony and then we kick off the new season. This year, because I'm way over here, it's a blessing and a curse. Blessing for me because I get like a longer window. This season ended uh, in March, but I we're not doing our ceremony till June when I'm back in Vancouver. So uh, we are going to we have a little bit of time, which is why I wanted to like try something new. I'm gonna do this in the open. Today, if it goes well, maybe I'll keep doing it with the rest of the posters and stuff like that. But 
um, let's go through this process a little bit here. Um, yeah, so this year, as I said, we've got these three winners. Ugh. Phil, KQ, and Chris. And so this part is a little bit messy. There's not going to be as much designing in this initial part because I've sort of like, I've got these people here. I've got, I made three playlists uh, each for each of them for all of the songs that they have submitted for the year. I've done like a loose sort in, in each um, playlist about the songs I'm thinking about doing for them. So with Chris, um, he might be one of the first ones I do because I've done three already for him. And this fourth one, I feel like maybe, you know, I can think about what sits in the series for him and based on colors that I want to use and like themes and stuff like that. Um, I've done like a couple electronic artists for him. I've done um, La Tigra, which is more like indie rock punk kind of thing. Um, this time around, I'm leaning towards this incredible song by No Name. Um, uh, maybe this Chemical Brothers song, uh, maybe PJ Harvey. I know Chris is a big fan of all these people. The ch these are kind of like the top. KQ, I haven't, I, uh, I'm thinking like this Fanny song, Ain't That Peculiar. I, I want to play these, but I also don't want, uh, the YouTube algorithm to like knock me down. So, uh, I might play just a few seconds from each, but I think, you know, we'll do some talking through and I'm going to like look these up on, um, genius and stuff or show the lyrics so we can kind of like see what's happening here. Um, we've also got Phil who, um, has got, he, so Phil is great. He's like, uh, he's one of the older guys in the group. Sorry, Phil, but uh, <laughs> he's got uh, a son, uh, Felix, in his early twenties, who's like in a hard in a hardcore band. Uh, Phil is the coolest dad I've ever seen and supportive. He goes to the shows. He's like big hardcore fan. Wears like the band shirts. Is like an actual fan. Isn't just there for support, but like. He'll go to like these incredible shows. I've been to a few shows with Phil. Um, Idols is one of those big bands he loves, and I know this. And so obviously he submitted a couple songs by them. The lyrics of Idols are I they're so visceral and clear. I I just have a feeling it's going to be one of these. Um, also, fun fact, he um, submitted this t Taylor Swift song as a kind of like point grab thing this was cheap this is like a thing that is kind of frowned upon in at least in for me in our league is when it's like i think your song that you submit should be authentic and like speak to you so with phil we let's see what was our it was the future classics from 2023 so this is uh, my friend Drew thought of this theme. He won the previous one. And so we all thought of this is a song that has to be recent that we think is going to be a classic, you know, 10, 20 years from now. Um, Phil uh, submitted. It was one of the last. In fact, it was last place in this week, um, which is good. This is justice in action, people. This is the like uh, this is what happens when you don't go authentic. He even says here, I loathe this song. I hope you do as well. But because we live in a shitty doomed world, this will be a future classic. This is true, but this is obviously an attempted point grab. Now, I have half a mind here just to design this Taylor Swift one for him. So he has to hang this on his wall. And this is his penance for trying to game the system here. Um... I don't think I, I'm going to do this. I think like at least not only this, maybe if we get some time, we're going to come back and make this for him anyway. And, uh, you know, Phil, if you're watching, uh, I don't think you are, uh, you know, this is going to be a secret between us, YouTube people. So I'm, I'm going to try and present this Taylor Swift one for him too. I, this is an extra one, but I think for his real one, we'll probably do one of these idol songs. Joy Division, Transmit, it's a great one too. But I find that maybe that's a little too um, too obvious. There's so much Joy Division stuff in the world. 
I love them. It's obviously influential and incredible music, but you know, I like to go a little, a little more um, obscure, like especially if it is someone. I think Idols is a meaningful band for Phil. So um, for KQ, I just met KQ just last year for the first time in person. He's a friend of a friend, which happens in this league. So this is going to be the hardest one, I think, because. Going for a song that speaks to somebody, but you don't quite know them that well yet, this is going to be tough. Chris, I know well. Chris is like, he's our co op developer. We're like, I feel like he's my brother from another mother, and we've, we've gone to shows, all this stuff. I think, I feel like I know Chris. KQ, I love you, but we are, I'm still learning about you. So we're gonna, we're gonna have to really lean on your comments here. And the reason I think, this um either ain't it peculiar ain't it peculiar i think is just a funny like cute country song is like nothing else i've like listened to before um yes james can i can i send you an invite for your next season yes yes i can absolutely do that i think every season we have a few people that filter out and i always have room for new people so yeah james i'll make sure you're in there i think you would be a huge great addition you have great taste in music so let's do that so i'm not going to play any more from this song because i think it is uh yeah let's not get the youtube people on us the rolling people by the verb is the other one i'm thinking because i think it's all about this r.i.p round so this round here um, is the act you always wanted to see but sadly never will. So they could be dead members or it could be just a band that's broken up and will probably never get together again. This one, okay, the winner of this, side note, uh, Luke, I love you, but like, and League, I love you, but I don't understand this pick. This is Nirvana, which I get, but it's a cover. First of all, it's on the Unplugged album. Like, it's a great album, but like, I don't know. I have a weird thing about like the special album thing of appeal. Like it's good. It's iconic. I get it. But like, I would have loved to see like an, an, a Nirvana song from one of their core albums do this, but this is like a cover of a David Bowie song who also I get, you can't see. So maybe that's why it won. It kind of captured two artists in one to me. I don't know. Uh, whatever it won. The community has spoken. This is the beautiful thing about democracy. You don't always agree with it, but you know, you go with people, what they like. Um, oh yeah, here's Phil's. See New Order, Hooky. This obviously means a lot to me too. So like Joy Division is still in the running here, I think because this might be a meaningful poster for, for Phil. Um, but let's go down. I wanna see KQ's here. Cause this is where he submitted the verb, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's see. Where are we going? Where are we going? Oh my God, he didn't do too well on this one. And no, no comments. See, some people don't put comments in. I need you to put comments in so I know it's meaningful. If you win, I gotta know why. Like, what? what is the song? But because this is someone you wished you could see but couldn't, I think also this song is quite uh interesting and it's got some like maybe lyrical stuff that could work well but you know kq's is going to be the hardest i might save that one for last that's going to be i'm going to need to like think on these songs a little bit so we got some songs we got some options we've got some standings we know where we're started um i'm thinking so for this i'm thinking Chris I'm like I've got so the where I do this is I I, lo I love using illustrator for these things um I've made some this is the print post you don't see any of the process in this first season here but I will I wonder if I I have that somewhere I, I I'm not shy about sharing my my messy stuff here um usually like because this is like I'm not getting this isn't a paid thing I, I try and rip through these pretty quickly and try not to overthink them some of these files are a little cleaned up just because these are huge like these are 13 by 19 size i have a i have one of those epson 
X 15,000 printers back in Vancouver. That's I just printed off on this great paper and these actually turn out surprisingly well. Like uh, I don't have to screen print them or get them put away. So it's like, a, it seems like a nice balance of like, you get this beautiful looking thing, the colors are great. Um, and I can kind of print it off a one-off. So it makes it easy to sort of do these things. The ink cost, I mean, that's another story, but thank God there's only three per season. Um, so this was my season two, I'm gonna open season three, <clears throat> just so you can see again, a little bit. This one was a messy one. I spent a little more time trying to figure out like concepts for each of these. I had a lot of, tr I was trying to like make like a little Leica camera, figure out like what section of lyrics to put in here, how to present them. Like with this La Tigre here, trying to put like brain and like fitting probably too many elements, finding like anatomy that worked with it. So it's very messy, very messy for this Suvlaki space. I just tried to find like a, this was I think from the International Space Station. I kind of liked this design and I wanted to put like a bit of an occult thing here with, you know, talking about cursing and stuff like that. It just seemed, how can I combine like this weird dark, you know, space I don't know space witchcraft together it just seemed really fucking cool and dark and like we got like a little planet here I don't know it just gave me that those spooky vibes and then this camera thing this one was the hardest one I think just figuring out how the hell do you make you know a dead person holding a camera look cool how do you incorporate lyrics and film and so eventually landed on writing the lyrics along the the lens like the that lens copy here just to have fun with it um yeah so we got those ones i have ahead of time set up the file for this league so you don't have to see much of that but i just have this like little bar at the bottom this is like their like the one piece of consistency it's got their name their place the season it was and then our little like a stupid like logo type which is just like the way it has grotesque like it's just like the basic as possible just wanted like you know well well made but like very you know boring um mind you hey james while you're here i you may be recognize it zoomed in but i believe we used your font. Yes, this first poster is designed using Transducer. So I even used it down here in the little Chris Galloway, but all these pieces here were, it just seemed like hi-fi. It was perfect. I love this typeface. Everybody, buy uh, James Holtquist Todd's um, uh, font, Transducer, and his other ones. He's an incredible type designer. Um, yes, do it. J uh, JTD design. Uh, James, put in your, your URL in the chat and let's let's pump this. Let's get you some some uh, some some hype. <laughs> um, yeah. So <clears throat> first things first. This is sort of my design canvas here. I like break it into like just a very basic one inch grid on here for fun. Yes, James, I know, like you're, uh, God, I got it. Okay, let's, let's just do this. Let's, let's pump James up right now. Cause I think, um, JT, I'm sorry. I don't remember your, oh yeah, JTD, JTDtype.com. Um, go here, buy his fonts. James is one of the, the few independent type designers he makes all of these they're incredible uh he is such does such a good job and has such a fine eye for this and my god all these fonts are incredible if you're on adobe he's uh, fonts is on there too but buy buy them directly just buy these use them in your projects incredible incredible library incredible collection um yeah oh yeah i wanted to show the this is one of the reasons I wanted to use Transducer. So if we even go to his cool uh, specimen pages, uh, I think you have like some cool illustrations. Maybe it's in your your PDF that uh, 
I oh, some incredible. Let's see, where do you have your PDF specimen? Let's 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 download this. Uh, do you have those illustrations? Where are they, James? I know you had some like hi-fi gear somewhere. Anyway, send them over. I want to see them because that's part of the inspiration that got me thinking about. Oh yeah, this would be great. Um, I love it. Anyway, so for Chris, well, oh, let's see. I want to look at this no name uh, song here. I'm going to play like just a few seconds here. This is an incredible hip hop song. It's very political. It is like, um, I don't know if you could hear this, but it is, um, there's something beautiful about this, uh, the words here and everything else, the lyrics. So, <laughs> Uh, itty bitty titty committee committee the world with me the girl with me um so i won't even go into that but like um talking about um revolution um <clears throat> talking about like uh community and and like uh talking there, there's like these like images of like sudan and and like bombing and strikes in the military and then it goes into like like concepts of selling out and like showing like being in line with the nfl and military there and like there's all these like wicked amazing like and also self-awareness too like talking about her being at coachella but still falling in line. like there's like it's very self-aware very political there is just so much cool shit in this um <clears throat> excuse me oh all on instagram okay we're gonna we're gonna come back to those james i think like yeah yeah go out go follow james on instagram too because uh let's fuck it let's do it now <laughs> we're all over the place but this is my style this is like my design style too it's a little all over the place and i think that is okay everyone's got their way um i know you gotta have Yes, here we go. Instagram. Um, okay. Oh yeah, right up here in the. Up in the. Oh, oh my God. James, amazing. This is a razor head shirt, so badass. You should make that for real. I would wear that. Um, okay, we got design notes. Let's see. I want to see those illustrations. Oh my God. Come on, James. Don't let me. Do oh, okay. That was a cool poster. Oh, sick. Distress type everywhere. Works for sports, too. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to have to get better at clearing my throat here. Some water. Mm. Game time. Okay, regular press. Okay, let's go down here. Oh, like, Jesus, look at all these things anyway. Oh. oh, here we go. Some, we got some dials. We got some, al some like, album art here. Oh, this watch face. Like, some good data visualization here. God. So good. So talented. Um, yeah. Anyway, please, please visit James. Love you, James. Love you. Okay. So, we go to namesake. So, this is sort of what I like to do normally is listen to the song a whole bunch. And I'll usually be listening to it as I design. You never know. Sometimes it's just to get the vibe of what's going on in it to, you know... I'll try and find, it'll sometimes take a little bit of time to come up with the exact passage that I want. And so, number one, it's got to be something that I think is a little bit visceral, that, um, you know, speaks to you, that is, uh, you know, has some kind of impact, the more, the better. If, it, if it's visual, it's kind of a cheat in some way, because then, you know, I can start thinking about what is what is the concept 
of the poster itself. Maybe it comes from that. Sometimes I'll cheat, like in the in the post here about the Feist one. I literally took like I stole the sea monster from the music video. Um, that is like what it looks like. Is this weird? Weird. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play it because don't need to but like it's got this weird puppeteer monster that looks kind of like this so it's just pulling that one element from it in other places it's just you know uh what's one that's yeah like this la tigra it was just literally the gut the gut was the word it based out what based for the whole thing here gasoline gut it's like just something kind of obvious but also try to make it you know try to combine a couple ideas if i can um and yeah just make it make it fun make it bold so i think this one has a lot of options in here we've got like let's see if we, let's analyze this a little bit here so um we got these first ones uh, you know and considering chris he's you know if i wanted to put it on his wall um <clears throat> i want it to be you know something that maybe speaks to him a little way that's relatable I don't know if he quite would relate to this part of it. Um, if we go, mm, dream about revolution, air pollution, same solution, socialism, they ain't talking. Probably won't put that on the wall. Um, <clears throat> but then we get down, we go into, mm, hmm. we go into so chris is a very white very british man who has got a giant heart he like builds co-ops like he helped us convert from a standard one to a to a real co-op now a thing you got to know about chris he is uh in a past life he so he's a financial guy he worked with some big banks doing forensic accounting so he would like try to sniff out like money laundering things like that is a super smart guy now he is a consultant so he works with credit unions he helps do things like design uh financial products for co-ops that are patient capital so they don't um so it's not like an exploitive like vc model where it's like they're asking for fast returns this is for cooperatives so where all the employees own the business they all have a vote so chris is very much believes in this movement and so do i he helped convert louder than 10 into a cooperative and is continuing to do it and <clears throat> sorry oh my god get out of my throat ka um and so he is um he works with some groups called, there's a co-op called solid state which is like almost like a co-op designed to help form co-ops and so it's for for underrepresented communities in surrey which is a suburb of vancouver and so um he is all about like social justice and creating workplaces that work for the people he's very political and he's also like the biggest music lover um we'll go to i've been to a rave with him I'm meeting him in Portugal in June to go see a couple festivals, uh, Primavera Sound, which should be a lot of fun. And so he also, he lives in Vancouver as well. So yeah, it's, it's like a fun, like, so going political is really like an area I think that, you know, A is appreciated and, you know, when we can mix politics and music, I think that's really fun. For me, music is really important to my own politics. Like, I listened to, like, Public Enemy was one of the first bands I listened to as a child. And it was like, oh, hearing 911 is a joke was like, what? You mean that the cops can be bad and the ambulance treats black people differently and all this? And it was, like, something that stuck with me at a young age and shaped a lot of, a lot of like, politics. Hey, Brad, how's it going? Bradley Boyce, winner of season three. Um, who I all saw your you all saw the poster for welcome he's also a co-op guy um, we grew up separately but in the same place in Calgary and 
probably went to a lot of the same shows in dive bars. Um, great, great, great human. Uh, yes. Also in finance in co-ops. And so <clears throat> a wonderful person. Uh, love you, Brad. Thanks for coming. Um, yes. I w yes, this is the process I went through for your song last year, Sivlaki Space Station. So this year, we are, we are going through Chris's right now. Again, that bastard won again. I can't believe I'm decorating his entire house. Ugh. Okay, so let's find some lyrics here. Bit of love, couple friends. You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this entire passage here. Uh, I don't think I can do it in this. So we, I like to go to Genius for this instead. Oh my god, I just heard this playing again. Let me stop that. Don't take me down, YouTube. Okay, and this song was called Namesake. Okay. Um, so this album. So we're going to take this. Sometimes this is good, too, because, like, if maybe the meaning isn't clear, some people has come up with some ideas. Um... So she's a socialist. Spoiler, so am I. Uh, yes, yes, very much. So uh, that's why, you know, I'm in co-ops. That's why for me, it's like uh, when I think about capitalism, really it's the, it comes down to ownership and power and who owns has power. And so for me, when I think about it, my own kind of like thoughts around it are really through things like co-ops where it's not necessarily a government owning like having owning every having ownership of everything although like you know it kind of is the the way chris put it is like once to me is like it is kind of like a co-op it's like the biggest co-op but for me i like the smaller distributed nature of like like little organizations it's a little more distributed and stuff like that and that's that's kind of where my like politics sit and so um this is it th this talks about like her own ideological ideological views and really that a lot of socialists which is totally true is that they haven't been um maybe they, they haven't bonded on a good job of bringing in other people of different backgrounds and races and social stratas and stuff like that so maybe le they stick maybe too much on class for instance and maybe not on race and how race intersects with class and so this is like a really uh i think blind spot with a lot of leftist politics in general um and so it's really cool to see artists like this talking like calling this out and also being like self-aware with stuff this is like the, these are the kind of conversations we need to have as a group so the other thing i love kind of about these hip-hop songs is they are very long there are for this job it's a lot of content to pick from so we can take a lot of passages and i'm gonna stick to like i'm just gonna get that content in there this is gonna be chris Let's see i'm gonna just maybe i'll maybe i won't go with chris first let's 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 just get some lyrics on the page let's start with content that's what i like to do um let's see chemical brothers here this is another option i'm just gonna get this down to like kind of this has got some good maybe lyrics it's a little more basic uh but uh it's like chemical brothers are pretty influential i, th I think this is be this would also kind of fit on his wall and let's see if we can find the genius songs for this um uh, chemical my chemical romance okay so here's a nerdy thing about me um i use this tiny keyboard and apart from it being a mechanical keyboard i also have a different um key layout <laughs> It's called Workman, and it's to, like, I did it to sort of try and optimize my 
typing, make it faster, because I'm kind of a not great typist. Um, so I thought, why, if I got to get good, why get good on QWERTY when I could do it on a more like, um, oh my god, this is, why not do it on a, a more efficient keyboard, which is nerdy. I was worried about losing my uh, QWERTY skills, but, uh, uh, but you know, I do it doesn't. It works with both. So I don't know. It's weird. I th feel like I'm typing faster on it, but it's kind of, it can be a little bit weird at times. I'm still getting used to it, even though I've been doing it for like probably two years now. <laughs> um, it's very nerdy. People laugh at me all the time for doing this, but you know what? Block them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do me and be weird. Um, okay. Oh, hi, Cheryl. I just saw her, your comment in Signal. Um, Signal is where we have our community chat, so I also posted this in there. Um, yeah, Cheryl is a wonderful human being. She's a former neighbor of mine in Vancouver. Um, and she just said, I have a great podcasting podcast voice and way of speaking. Thank you so much. I am nervous as hell, so... It's nice to get a little bit of encouragement and hear that I don't sound like a total jackass. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's see how we're going. Can I make you a mega poster, Brad? Oh, <laughs> kidding. Maybe, oh, a mega, oh, for, for some reason my brain went to like, not make, like the anime, not like, <laughs> No, Brad, I am not making you a mega make America. No, uh, no, that's awful. I know you're fucking around. That's what you do. But um, fun fact, Brad, uh, can you uh, let's see. Do you have any of those photos online or anything there you can share in signal about your I don't know. Maybe this is out. Maybe I shouldn't do this. I'm just going to tell people what you did. You, you're kind of a, a bit of a vandal back in the day in the Calgary days. So Brad showed me. He would go to these signs outside of like like churches and restaurants and stuff and you know like they've got the let's see i have internet here what like let's look at church signs here um so none of these oh yeah so like we'll take these maybe signs like this with the removable letters and he would rearrange them to say different things in restaurants and stuff like funny stuff uh, Brad, you have to remind me exactly some of the ones you said, but they were, uh, it's pretty hilarious. I don't condone any of this, of course, but, uh, you know, I also love that people do that kind of thing because, you know, that's little, little tiny protests that maybe don't do anything in the long run, but kind of make us think. And that's, it's in, in some ways, it is a form of design. And it's like a, it's like a real life poster. It's like this, you know, changing meaning and changing a message. So it is kind of like it adds to and changes our visual language. And it is a political act in a lot of ways, even if it's like just silly or a prank, those kinds of things are kind of, uh, yeah, they make a difference in at least our own lives and something to chuckle with and maybe make someone think about something else. Okay, I'm gonna close these other files just cause, you know, so my illustrator doesn't slow down too much here cause it can, especially once we get rolling on these big old, big old files. So we get a bunch going on here. So I like to delete. This is the one time I usually don't like to delete a lot of my work as I go, but in this case, because they are so big, which doesn't make sense to me. These are still just vector files. It's just the physical side. For some reason, Illustrator seems to not handle that stuff as well, but whatever. Okay. Ugh. So we got some chemical brothers. We've got some no name. We've got our poster here. Let's start thinking of some conceptual things. Now, you know, look at different things like that. Um, and yes, sometimes I agree with that. I think, yes, you should do that. I don't design like that a lot. Sometimes, 
sometimes I'll get out of my head and I'll do some other things, but I'm a very much a like in the context designer, which is maybe breaks the rules a little bit. Maybe it slows me down sometimes, but I can, I feel like I can go pretty quick. I also am bad at doing like the shortcuts and things like that. I can't be fucked to all learn everything all the time on it. But so you might be yelling at me through the screen if you do know these things. Um, and maybe do it anyway, because, you know, maybe that's a way for me to learn, too, to get better. I want to learn, make this a learning process. So, uh, let me see. I'm going to have to do some listening, I think, between this and the next session to really get the feel of these songs again in my head. Um, but we're going to try and see if we can go lyrically. I wish that, like, this is an issue with, like, copyright law and stuff, too. Like, on one hand artists should get paid they don't get fucking paid anyway from streaming let's face it it's like the streaming platforms get paid a lot the the, the like i think the how much does the ceo of spotify make it's obscene right um it, the whole business is, is fucked but and then youtube as well they are making bank on their ads and everything else the artists themselves they make nothing on here so it sucks that we can't even like play the artist here. I mean, it, that's the crazy thing. If YouTube can recognize the song, why can't they pay a royalty to that using their own ads? Anyway, maybe they do. I don't know. I don't know YouTube, but we'll see. Okay, so we got this no name business here. To Kane, I really love like this. So there's a couple areas here that I want to highlight. So. There is some like real, I like to stick to maybe four lines tops kind of thing. Um, same day, the air strikes, strike down and around. I run to the house with a blunt in my hand. Let's smoke. I don't want to see death no more. Let's fight. They are the devil hiding in plain sight. Like some of this is like, so part of it is like thinking about, okay, so where is the actual beginning of the idea that's being talked about here now this is a thing that i'm finding out in real time that it's actually hard to speak through some of this stuff at the same time as thinking through meaning for me i have to like sit there and think so i'm just gonna like sit here for a second <laughs> in silence maybe y'all could like i don't know mention some shit in the chat or whatever if you're around um but like let's think about I don't know tell me tell me a story tell me like your favorite uh tell me a time where music especially po made a political impact on you or you thought differently about something I want to hear it if you're if you're around I don't think we have many viewers but you know thanks for hanging with me if you are there it means a lot um okay so no name. where's your cane you stand in the rain to take your life. So there's like a lot going on here. I don't want to see death no more. Let's fight. They got the devil hiding in plain sight. That's you. That's me. The most. I don't really get it. You ain't really with it. All that eat the rich, tax the rich. Y'all ain't really about shit. So it's like a, there's like a lot of. This is like really powerful in that like it's talking in the context of design. This is really interesting because let's see. She's talking about like how you know we talk a big game like we say these big slogans but it's really symbolic right it's not actually doing anything which is really it's a big thing i think about social media age and about like a lot of like especially like some centrist politics do this but it even comes into the left where we like our symbols we like you know doing these big broad acts saying like oh yeah you shouldn't do this posting to instagram things like that but when it comes down to real actual material change it's like shifts in power and shifts in how people are treated we don't really do that um the one thing i like about co-ops in particular is like it does it's a very small scale and i don't want to overblow what it's doing but you are actually giving people power at work. It's work is the 
the biggest institution in our lives, right? Is the thing that affects the quality life more of life more than anything. It's your job, right? It that's the thing in our society that provides you with the capabilities to get food, keep your shelter, have security, have any kind of leisure or anything like that. And so, you know, when you don't have control of that, when someone else has power to let you go easily or change how much you get paid, that kind of puts us in a bit of a precarious situation. So in my mind, co-ops are interesting because like, like you can have like a tech company that does like a DEI initiative, for example, and they'll say nice things for, you know, people of color in that company and maybe you'll have like more like nicer ways to talk to each other and maybe you put in some policies that make it easier or make people aware you have like awareness training so people are aware but like you're not necessarily giving underrepresented people actual power or more money or agency over their workplace or their lives and so a co-op i like because this is an actual vehicle that makes it so like it is written in bylaws and stuff like that. So now they aren't perfect. Nothing is. But like when you have an equal vote to everybody there, you are also an owner. You have power. You actually get a cut of profits in the same way. And you have not only that, you have a say in how that profit is used. That is an actual material change to your life that changes, you know, your you have more control and a bigger say over like say the your salaries or the hours that you work or the working conditions that you are in um and so like you know like you go to bigger economies with a lot of co-ops like Ilia romagna in italy or um uh the name is slipping me and i shouldn't it's because of the pressure's on right now but the biggest co-op in the world in spain there's a whole like town this is basically a co-op and it's a co-op of co-ops but like even just going on the wikipedia page for like worker co-ops you just see like like some like fascinating stats like when you give people power it does make a real um difference in their lives and so like they have you know 29 percent smaller chance of closure after control so they stay alive they're more like th they can weather the storm in rough times more and that's because like in a traditional company maybe like the a few owners decide let's just lay everybody off or whatever in this way you kind of it's a more engaged thing maybe you have to be like hey everybody we have a problem how do we want to get through this maybe everyone takes a pay cut maybe you change some business functions but you decide as a as a group as a community how to do that together um there's things like employment like p employment stability people stay longer um there's like a higher like a lower wage gap there's like there's some co-ops that have like pay like pay in a Mon Mondragon that's the one I'm thinking about the pay ratio between the lowest and highest can only be one to nine so like you know the the CEO of or whatever the the president of the board they can only make t nine times more than the lowest paid employee making like minimum wage or something which maybe that seems like a lot but like if we talk about a capitalist enterprise in America, often that number is more like one to 300 or something like that. So it's much more uh, equitable in that way. And so it's more productive. You have more of a stake in there, more work satisfied. So there's like a lot of benefits that you see from like having this kind of power. So I'm going to get on a soapbox every now and then about this shit. And so that's just like... Um, that's just how I design and, and like how I think about like my politics and, and like my work. And I try and incorporate a lot of that stuff together. And so that comes right back down to the ground level of even when I'm considering content for something like this. I'm not working with a client. Keep in mind, I'm working for basically myself and that is has its advantages and everything else. And but like I get to design for people that also care about this stuff, which Chris, as a co-op person, is all about this kind of thing too. So I know that about them. Um, so this area here, I think 
this is a real cool part. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna highlight this part here, just like some color, just so I got it. This is horrible to read, I know. Um, she wants some money, you can say I just pay back. Um, like Scooby Doo and Hunter Pass, see the signs, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Here we go. Okay, this is cool. Okay. There's like, there's like some interesting stuff, like transition. So it's like interesting. It's hard to maybe find exactly the right transition point here right now, but like, you get like this wicked line. This, oh fuck, this is no name. This is crazy. She's so good. Okay, so like Scooby Doo in a haunted house. So like we got like the haunted house. See the ghosts. They're talking about seeing the signs. Read in between the lines. So like you have like this death to a crime scene so the chalk line of a crime scene which also leads into the nfl the lines down the field all this where we're going into nfl as a propaganda machine for the military complex like the, if you watch an nfl game they got like these crazy i don't watch nfl uh or a lot of sports but like what i do know is seeing you know you see like pre-shows and halftime shows with like jets and shit going all over the place it's like uh it's like an ad for the military and so it is political in itself like the act of a lot of like the sports and everything else like it is all it's all meaning and message being pulled into these places that seem sometimes innocuous it's like oh cool jet whatever but this is really supporting some big military stuff and so we see that in the world constantly we see it with israel and palestine or russia and ukraine and all these pieces all of that stuff whenever we see this propaganda or these meanings or like a painted whatever they are they're all adding this is this is like noam chomsky shit manufacturing consent right they are it is making it okay for these things to happen or making it more palatable to see military and guns and violence in these like institutions that we normally that we watch for entertainment so in that way like design and things like that there's a real power to it so we don't always see it like often um so this this morning i'm doing like a, a bit of interviewing some design friends and colleagues for an article that i'm writing and so I talked to my friend, Leia L. Cantara, who has been a designer for years. And one of the things she talked about was how when designers come into the field, it's very like, ah, I'm going to change the world. And it's very, it's a little bit egotistical. Like I'm, my design is, my work is, it's art. We are going to, it's going to change everything. But it's also very like, surface level like it's you know you have this idea like you get to design this app it's going to change everything for the better or whatever but there's very little understanding as to what you're actually doing when you're changing meaning or how how it actually affects it so often when we design especially for clients we might be reinforcing messages that are actually against our own real values that we all believe in um but it might not be obvious you know if we're doing design work for the nfl knowing that we're supporting a military cop like goes several layers as to what we're actually doing here and so and uh, it's a real conflict because often we do get put in these places as designers and employees but we can't i mean we can't escape it we still got to work and so I, I don't know it's i'm, I'm we'll, we'll get into this in the series i think later because this is fun I, I don't even care if people are watching because i like doing this i'm gonna keep doing this and i'm gonna rant so um so we got like this whole thing here i really love this part too um same little okay i don't know see my hip-hop knowledge is very small and i don't know what this but this i don't know who lil terry is but like <laughs> maybe y'all can help me out if you're around help me out please but uh this is an area, this is a, another cool section here. I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna do a little bit of design research. So this is another area to check out. 
go Rihanna, go watch the fighter jets fly high. War Machine gets glamorized. We play the game to pass the time. Go Beyonce, go watch the fighter jet fly high. War Machine. This is fucking badass. This is crazy. Like calling out your peers that are more successful. Like these are revered people. Just calling them out for like performing at the nfl like doing like supporting this war machine they are like they're artists and in some ways this is similar to what i was talking about with the design like we do these things because like it's a cool gig or whatever maybe not even connecting that what we're doing is actually supporting a much bigger and grim thing that we maybe even morally even if we disagree with it we still do it for you know maybe the fame or the 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 job or whatever it is and so it's about being a little bit principled she also admits that she's done it in the coachella line up there so you know we're all guilty we're all complacent we're all a part of this system so you know and it's like we can't i don't i don't think there's any oh there's more more lyrics here even but i think one of the the big things that i want to talk about is like shame uh we have a lot of shame in our culture the left is bad for it the center is bad for it too a little bit you know it's you know you know being in therapy for like a few years one of the things i've had to contend with is my own shame and what is shame good for see this is these are gonna go you put a mic on me i'm just gonna go off on tangents here i haven't even designed anything yet oh that's okay this is why we're here so when we talk about shame, there's like a difference between guilt and shame. So like where guilt, it's like being maybe feeling bad for something you did. Feeling shame is like feeling bad about who you are or something you are. It's like the difference between, oh, I messed up. I did something bad or And the difference between that and I am a fuck up. This is my identity as a person who did something bad. And I think when you shame someone else, you were saying, oh, that person is a thing, not that they did a thing. So that's a thing that I think is really interesting to me politically is there that shame does nothing. It doesn't. There's no there is no like if you read Brene Brown, she's got a great book, something like called, uh, it's not just me. It's it talks all about shame and like the, the cure. There is no, there's no use for it. There's a use for maybe guilt. You can see things like, Oh, I acted poorly here. How can I learn from this shame? There's just nothing. Cause it's just like putting that on you as an identity. It makes you un- feel unchangeable or like you there's something immovable about your identity. So when, We talk about politics as a similar thing where I think it doesn't get us anywhere when we shame people for like, oh, you are this, you are an awful person. You, you, uh, you know, you're, it may, it makes people so they can't change. They can't grow all this, but really you can absolutely call them out for bad things they've done, but to, for them to be bad is like, that's different. So it's a little nuance there. Um, we can talk about shame later. That's another topic I like. Um, so let's look at this last course here. Never need no name, a bit of love in memory lane, put Jimmy Rowland up the bud. I don't play them games. So this is great. Uh, it's nice. I think we got a couple like candidates here though for this poster. So let's, let's look at these. So I'm going to remove these for a second. I'm just going to take a drink of water for a sec. Okay, <clears throat> they got the devil hiding in plain sight. That's you, that's me, the whole world is culpable. Why complacency float the boat the most? I don't really get it, you ain't really with it. All that each, eat the rich, tax the rich, you ain't really about that shit. Bitch, if you want some money, you can say that. You deserve the paycheck, because they took everything. I'm not gonna say the N word, of course. <laughs> let's go get that and take it to the hood though share it with the community we shoulder soldiers in plain clothes everybody got their role don't be you know. so this is a part like i meant i didn't go over but this is actually really cool this is like and this is really close to that co-op kind of thing right it's really about 
distribution of wealth. Like, it's like calling people out, like, you're doing this for money. Just admit it. You deserve it because, like, you've been fucked. It's uh, the whole goddamn, like, uh, black identity and, like, the history, the slavery and capitalism, all these things have really fucked up a lot of people. And so it's like, yeah, take it. You deserve it. And then also let's take it and actually use it productively like you're you are soldiers that you have an obligation as like these people who have access to this to help where you your your people your community they got a role don't work for the oppressors the oppressors um and so she's saying i'm i'm gonna play mine too so i you do it i'm gonna do it too we're in this together we're gonna fix this so um this is also like a really cool area um yeah this is all of these pieces are candidates for this i think god i love this so let's not think about exact lyrics right now that we're going to use in the thing but i think like when we start to think about these lyrics we've got like some imagery that starts to come up, right? Like we can use literal words here. We do like some depictions of a devil in plain sight. Um, and saying that we're all, all of us are responsible and that that devil is us. Um, and it's our complacency that kind of hits that. So like, you know, float the boat. I feel like in this way, it's almost a metaphor in itself. So it's like, it's like a double, like, I don't know if that quite works. Um, don't get it. You're not with it. Yeah. Like there's like a, there's like a hypocrite, hypocriticalness that she's calling out and it's like, eat the rich tax. You're, you're not really, so it's not enough. It's like, you say these, it's like these empty words. It's like, and almost that in itself is the devil, right? So you've got, it's like, if you say the words, you don't have to take action. Right. And that's, you know, if we talk about design, like, that's a lot of people like we make posters like a protest poster and we hey, we post it up which maybe has a a place but like we're not actually it doesn't it only goes so far like how are you like how are we moving money how are we changing power those are the things like if you have the means how do you bring that to your community how do you actually like more than a, a message do that so this is this is cool this is like so in this instance, how are we taking, like, what kind of imagery can we use here? There's, like, <clears throat> so we have, like, we can do something, like, we can make the poster a poster, like, a poster within a poster or something. I can be, like, oh, okay, so we could have... We could do something where, like, a devil is holding a poster, which is, like, it's kind of literal in this, and then we're having this. This is maybe a thread I'm going to, like, okay. So, you know, there's, like, note-taking apps and stuff like this, and maybe this is why people sketch more. Um, but I'm doing this in the open here. So this is, we're going to just do this in here. We're going to go, like, ideas. We're going to go devil holding poster. And I kind of got some like holding protest poster. And this is like, obviously, I'm looking for places where we can showcase lyrics. This one's obvious. Maybe it's too obvious. It's the first idea that I kind of developed out of this. So often, sometimes with these ones, like there's some things like if it's i'm designing a logo i i force myself to make like a hundred logos before i settle on like the top three this i'm less concerned about i'm i kind of like to go with my gut on um, often the first thing is the thing that like just goes or second or third we'll see if i don't like it or it's it feels dumb then we'll keep moving so what else we got here we got we got some of this stuff down here we got the scooby-doo ghost signs read, read behind the hinds is a crime scene 
propaganda for the military complex. So, okay. So there's some strong imagery here. We got some, we got Scooby-Doo, uh, which, you know, like we could do something in like, you know, using Scooby-Doo fonts or like, uh, you know, that style of illustration is the cartoon. I feel like those things are a little obvious though. And I don't, as I said, I'm going to work within my skills. I can't, I'm not an illustrator like that. So that's part of it too. So if we move on, we're talking about ghosts, right? So we do, there's imageries of ghosts. There's the crime scene outline. We've got a football field. We've got the military. There's like, okay, so <clears throat> here's something else. Let's, let's think about like football field, field, but instead of yard lines or whatever the hell you call those things, clearly I'm not a football guy. We maybe have some like show like, I don't know, like so show lines of soldiers or even weapons so like maybe this maybe we have a football field and like it's made up of instead of lines we use like some other imagery to like combine it so i love this idea of um combining two ideas into one uh there's some great designers shamelessly <clears throat> there's a designer named jason munn um let's see I don't, I don't like to look at his posters while I'm doing this because I am susceptible to like taking this stuff sometimes, but <laughs> as we all are, right? If we are not careful, like he's got a kind of, I've got a kind of similar design style. Oh my God, his site's under construction. But he, the thing he's really good at, the one thing I try to take away is his ability to combine two ideas into one. Um, let's see. I want to find one that's familiar just because I can talk about it. So like some of them are a little more abstract. First of all, his graphic design is super on point. It's really cool. Um, let's see some of these early ones. I haven't looked at them for a little while, but let's see. So like take something simple like this. He has an envelope and a leaf for this American football poster. Um, is it like, I don't know why he came up with this. I don't know what the meaning is of the combination here. Some of them are more abstract. He obviously has a process. I don't know what this has to do with American football, the band, not the sport that we're talking about. But, you know, it's it's just a cool visual. It's combining. It's these two ideas combined that make it interesting. Um, and I love that. I, I don't know. He, he does this other places, too. Um, this is like a record player. This N is also a thing here. It's like when you, it's, it's more than just a thing, right? Like a, a piece of just like one idea. It's how do you combine something to make it interesting? And so for me, I really love that concept and try to incorporate that kind of approach into my work. Um, so we got crime scenes, we got propaganda, uh, we got, guns and we got the west bank so we got like we're talking about like palestine here um how the super bowl like how all this stuff supports like this crazy genocide stuff in the west bank that's happening it's like yeah so there are other images images there too so like I think with Chris, uh, like in the thing I want to be aware of is like, is this a piece of art that, you know, or design that I want Chris to have on his wall and be proud of and look at? It's his prize, is also somewhat meaningful to him. You know, what are these, how, is, what is it going to be, what's it going to look like in place? And so I think for Chris, any of these would probably be kind of interesting. Um, the devil holding the protest poster this could easily go the wrong way i think when you look at it too um i don't want people to look at it and say protesting is bad because i don't think it is but i think there is something 
worth exploring there that you know it's like a it's more a symbolism versus action thing and I, sometimes protesting is the only thing a lot of us can do because we just don't have the power to do other things or the knowledge and that's okay um yeah so we ain't really with it so tax tax the rich eat the rich okay so we're talking complacency here so you know what uh, i don't know i say these are two kind of strongish things i'm going to this i'm really feeling this football field so you know like like i said uh you know sometimes you want to go with a bunch of ideas this one just is sticking with my head and you know i want to get to some design work in here even though like for me i think a, an important part of this process is just the um is the pre-work right this is all the going through talking through some of this stuff even me yammering on about like politics and going through and you know you know it seems like tangent stuff but all of this kind of helps in my own brain figure out what the hell i'm going to do and so i'm just going to start with this poster here well, actually what i'm going to do first is we're going to take our artboard and we're going to get into some design i'm going to make a copy here just above it so that i have a blank slate in case this concept doesn't work or i want to do something different i can go down here just make some quick tweaks here. Made thirst place, place, mm -hmm. third place. Season four. Okay, so we'll get that out of the way. The formality. My biggest fear is like I print this off and I fuck this up. Like just the little <laughs> detail of whose name it was and what place they got in the, all that. I think that's maybe every designer's nightmare is. You know, we've all made a typo that, especially in print, where it had to go out and, you know, it was a disaster. So, a couple things I want to set up here. So, number one, I ahead of the time, I made, I, you know, I have my little canvas here. This little area is like 16 inches by 13 inches. I don't know if you care about those details. I have this little grid here. It's a really coarse, just one inch by one inch grid. I like this for my illustration stuff um, helps just keep things lined up in a way follows this stuff down here and it just fits well on these on this poster size for some reason so I have my uh, shit set up here I'm gonna just like for colors also because we're printing is on poster I try to go for like some cmyk things i i want to get i love bright colors especially in print and so if we're talking about football field again i'm going to kind of go obvious and try and find like some green grass color here so i'll like kind of sit in here and so while i'm doing it number one i'm looking for tone that kind of looks good um it is going to appear differently in print than on screen. And sometimes if I actually have a printer available, I will do some test prints and stuff like that just to try it out. But I don't have that. I'm, I'm in Bali right now. I'm on the other side of the world. I have no printer right here. I just have my laptop and kind of a crappy side screen. So we are just going to wing it and hope for the best. I might adjust these colors when I actually get back to a printer. But for now, we're just going to do our best. So one thing I like to do in these posters is I like to, this might be an OCD thing. I don't know. But I like to try and keep, get my work on off the CMYK colors. And I try to go with like whole, chunky, very strong numbers. So this one just happened to line up on 60% cyan 0% magenta 100% yellow and 0% black I think this is like a nice base I want to start from it's just like whole numbers it prints nice it just uses like the specific ink cartridges and, and that so I mean I don't know I don't know printer technology that well so maybe it doesn't translate <laughs> like that. I'm gonna tell you all my weaknesses and things I don't know I'm gonna be vulnerable like that but for this this works so let's i'm gonna i'm gonna search for let's find some football fields 
I kind of know what a football field looks like, but I, I love my references, so we're going to find one. Football pitch. Oh, of course, we go the true football, which is, you know, the entire world goes call is that's what we call soccer in Canada and U.S. But we're going to we're going to go American football here. Well, Wikipedia has got like this. This doesn't to me. This doesn't look accurate. I don't know. Like it's accurate, but and I'm sure it's a bit too accurate, but it I, I feel like you know there's missing numbers in other fields and all this and so let's try to find maybe some photos let's go football field top down let's look at this um uh, what do we got here we got a bunch of stock photos i don't want to I'm not, I'm not going to copy these or anything. Oh, my God. I think this is sort of like, I don't love the look of these things, to be honest. But, okay. So, I'm just going to, can I not find one that's a stock photography company? Um, let's go. So I know there's a difference also about like American football and Canadian football, which is the one I'm more familiar with. I used to kind of watch that as a family thing growing up. Um, I know it's a slightly different shape, but yeah. Oh my God, like see, these are different proportions. Why are these all stock photos? I, like we could talk about the shittiness of Google these days and how it like serves up a lot of commercial content like <laughs> like marketing copy or like stock photo products obviously without you know it's not really and i mean maybe there's a bunch of licenses you have to clear to do take a photo of a football field but oh god oh god these are so lame okay whatever let's just drag some stuff out here uh, uh. again I'm just looking at this I just need some like things to look at I'm not using this as my stock photo shit um wonder if I go football field Let's see what do we got here again why why can't i feel it find an actual field this is horrible google horrible what is wrong with the world <laughs> um okay let's just get some like we're just gonna have to get some actual things that maybe don't look perfect weird angles okay here we go <clears throat> of course these images are in these weird uh, open image in the window let's just do this okay there we go okay good enough oh yeah it's my little uh, wallpaper my vote matters see i care I care about voting. That's more for co-ops, but it works for everything. Okay, here we go. We got... Oh. I'm going to add the word military. Let's see if we can find some military displays. Oh, yeah, here we go. Flyovers. Okay, we're going to steal this picture. We're going to steal this picture. God, nice. I'm just not in for war, you guys. I'm not in for the military in general. But let's see. Art of the flyover. Okay. Okay, here we go. This is like, <laughs> we got some, some shit here. 
Oh my god, again, these photos. I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm gonna cheat. We're gonna screenshot. This is gonna inflate the size of my illustrator file like mega here. But let's, okay, that one sucks. That, yeah. Shut up, ad. Okay. <laughs> let's go, America. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Bud Light. Yeah, it salutes. I mean, we could do a poster of like <laughs> Jay Z saluting <laughs> in a military outfit. We want to go real, real fun. Hey. Anyone ever have this where your sh the screenshots don't appear? Oh, here we go. Looking on the wrong screen. Okay. So now we're going to drag these. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to open up a binder here. I'm going to go into my uh, where are we? You're going to see my messed up folder. Don't look at this. This is all like very much my messy personal folder. My work folder is much better. But I'm going to I want to make a new just general folder here so I don't have to carry all these photos in the file. Oops, Illustrator. Yes. Music League season 4 posters. Um, this is another do as I say, do as I don't do as do as I don't don't do as I do do as I say. Um, do better naming with your design work, people. Half the stuff's in the cloud now, but Illustrator unfortunately is not. Okay, I'm gonna move this off the screen uh, for a minute. You don't need to see me dragging in these photos, but I'm going to pull some of this into the file. <clears throat> oh, I got an office chair here. You know how hard it is to find an office chair in Bali? No Herman Millers here, people. This is like fun Indonesian knockoff brands everywhere. And who knows if they're good for your back. Okay, take care of your backs, people, especially in design. You're gonna, you don't want to end up old and decrepit too soon. Okay, so obviously this isn't a regulation size pitch. Uh, how could I have already missing links? I hate this. Uh, Illustrator, let, let's update them. Sure. I don't know. Did you do anything? Fine. I don't know. Okay. So we got some, like, all we know is we have lines. Right now, I'm just going to go, you know, let's start with some full bleed things here. I know this isn't like regulation size and that's okay. I don't really concern myself with that, especially with these conceptual posters. The idea is you get, you know, the rough sort of concept. So we're gonna find a good line weight. I'm gonna go like maybe four point for now. I'm gonna align these to our grid. I don't know if I should do every one. I'm going to start with, oh my god. This is, a, you know, look at me zooming out. I got a new mouse last week in, in Bangkok. And getting used to it a little bit. It's one of the MX, the Logitech MX3s. I can't stand those Apple mice. They just give me wrist problems. So here we go. I know there's better ways to do this. I think we can just go duplicate well that duplicated all of them but i think if i just do one we hit this d and yeah it just follows it along in the same interval it, i remember that trick so let's just take off the guides here and just see what we're looking like do we even look like a football pitch at all <clears throat> kind of kind of we're kind of getting there like if we if we push how often like these stock photo ones let me get rid of that that's a duplicate. Let's look at some fields here. 
stock photos have the alternating colors, but I don't think that's actually the case in real life. They just do that to make it look like grass, which is kind of goofy in my opinion. Um, let's even see how, if this is the right number of spaces. Let's get that right at this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there should be 20 there. Y'all are probably laughing at me because I should know. Like, oh, how, how big is the football field? But I don't. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So we got sixteen. So now we have a decision. Do we care about making this accurate or do we want to make this just kind of feel right? And I think that depends if we actually want to write in the yard numbers in here to make it somewhat accurate. I think maybe I'm going to just do it anyway. So if we have 16, we got to make four more. Do we got to add four more or three more of these? So I'm just going to like, I'm just going to make three lines here. My math, I'm on the spot. Give me a break. Give me a break. Oh, and actually, I'm going to do one. Ah. This is a temporary one. This goes just so that, like, when I do this next little trick, that we get even spacing from the edges. So I'm going to, I've just highlighted all the lines. And I am just going to. Um, where is my, hmm, this is a weird thing with Illustrator. Like they have all the alignment things up here, but for some reason it doesn't have the distribute ones. <sighs> Maybe there's a way to do it. Tell me how in the comments. But so if I open up Pathfinder, nope, not Pathfinder, a wide, there we go. We have these distribute spaces. So this is, I'm sure there's an easier way, but this is how I do it. Okay, I'm going to drag you over here because I use you a lot. <clears throat> Again, this is a new computer, so I'm still getting used to the... I haven't set up my workspace properly, which may be something I should do. So this is off the grid, but that's okay. It's, it's made its own grid. This is how you be flexible. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, we need at least one more. one and we're gonna do that again and where are you here we go one two three four five one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty okay we got the right amount that way do we also want the end zones though do we want the end zones this is already getting a little crowded you know what I care enough to do that. You know what? For now, we're going to leave it off. I don't want this to get too busy. Um, so the other thing is they kind of have these dashes in between. I don't know if we, I don't know. Something, I try not to get too mired in this detail. I want it to be accurate, but I want it to um, also be somewhat like just just needs to get the message across that's what it's about right i'm not going to make all these little ticks maybe i will later if it needs it so okay so we got this field our concept was to try and think of like you know what's a how do we combine some like weapon or military thing in here that works um i just want to see chris's other posters for a quick hot second so we got this bright red bright blue we got this purple we got kind of like green is unlike any of these opposite of this will it fit in i think i think it might if we go bright i don't know i think it'll work we're gonna go with it for now chris isn't a sports guy for american football well, he he loves the real football soccer so that's something but that's another area we could look towards but let's see how do we make this how do we incorporate some military in here so we can replace the lines that's sort of like the first obvious thought i 
came up with. And I think if we, I kind of want to like reduce the weight of some of these lines. Or at least increase the weight, maybe. Maybe that's the better one to go, this one. And we just double it. Um, hmm. Is there anything else this looks at? Like the crosshairs come to mind. It's sort of like, it's a grid, like military. I think of military, I think of very like order. Like that's what I thought of when I first thought of this is like lines of like very organized soldiers and things like that. Let's look at our, our reference photos here for a second. Uh, yeah, I don't have much showing those types of things. Maybe I can search for more. A military piece. Hmm. Yeah, these posters are actually kind of handy to have up. Too. Okay. Uh, this is the messy part where I hit these dead ends and I'm like, I don't know if I like this. I might hate this. But sometimes you gotta stick through it a little bit. We got lines. Let me see here. I can think of, these could be, oh, okay, here's something. We got football here. You know, if we look at things like these jets flying across, this brings comes to mind things like missiles flying through the air. So what if we are to take like these lines here? So I'm just holding shift and sending these through I don't know. Does this need to be designed technical tutorials? I don't know. So if I like this concept, I'm going to maybe, you know, I'm going to make these more precise, probably align back to this grid a little bit. And heck, you know what? While we're here, let's just do that anyway. Why not? Let's save ourselves some time here because I think this actually works well in this instance. Here, 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 and maybe maybe it's not linear. Maybe we do a little more exponential. So like, maybe the higher up, the more you know, the more faster the rate. It just gives it a sense of like, maybe these top ones. These are so I'm thinking. You know, I'm saying a lot of this in my head, but I realize I'm not monologuing this. It's, I'm getting used to this. It's like, okay, so maybe a simple thing is these these are like missiles, right? So maybe we can design a little missile so we can go, it's like some sort of weaponry or a bullet or something like that because it kind of reminds me of like almost like, like the chemtrails or something or a jet or something, right? Chemtrails forming a football field. And then what I'm getting down here, oh my God, this is, this is gonna get political. People are gonna oust me, hate me for this. And that's okay, because you know what? We are principled people here. And we design what we believe in, regardless of what uh, people say and care about, but here we go. So we're, we're gonna make arrowheads for now. This is kind of like, oh, wrong side, done. So we're gonna give this an arrow. I think the most, for now, missile like that looks not kind of cheesy. We're gonna take just this basic one for now. This is a placeholder just for me to conceptually feel if this is gonna work. I might try a couple different ones actually, just to see, you know, what do we, gives it a little different flavor. So say we have these lines. And so this kind of reminds, is starting to remind me of like some old like airline, like like uh, Pan Am or Lufthansa kind of advertisements from maybe the 60s or 70s or something. We'd have like these arrows and lines that go across here. The difference is now we want this to feel like not like we're glorifying the military or this sort of concept. We want to maybe 
have something how do we combine like some sort of like you know what i'm thinking is maybe there's a little explosion here or a little village or whatever uh how do we maybe we move these lines up top here and then we might need more hints to that this is a football field right maybe adding those yard lines or like the the numbers or whatever but this is starting to feel like something really cool uh i'm going to so one thing about me is I really love just using shapes. And this is going to be ugly at first, at first, because I'm really, I'm not looking for my final graph. I'm looking for concepts here. So we got this, maybe, there we go, there we got this, boom. Obviously these colors don't really work well with green, maybe they like, we're gonna go some darker tones maybe to make it stand out again ugly that's okay i'm not looking for beauty yet we'll get there and then maybe <laughs> this looks like a chef's hat this looks like exactly how i illustrated when i first started design <laughs> as a child in college just like i'll throw some shapes together i don't care this is not i am not looking for perfection here this I'm gonna go paste in front, do this, and then make it like, I don't know, just change the color. So in my mind, this is a placeholder for maybe a city or something, not a chef. <laughs> but this is what it's looking like for now. Okay, so here we go. So I just realized I'm going here for like two hours almost, and much of this is talking about it. I don't know if any of y'all are gonna follow along here. It doesn't matter. Hopefully, I know for me, I like watching this stuff. It's sometimes meditative. This might not be the case for you. And if it isn't, that is understandable. Maybe I'll take some clips from this later. Um, so yeah, we have this explosion here. Obviously, it doesn't look like an explosion. In my mind, that is what's happening. And that's all that matters for me at this point. I also want to think about like, okay, how do I incorporate words into this? So I want to do it in a natural way. Um, there is one thing, like I will say, that kind of bugs me about, so like in these ones, I kind of like how the type is incorporated, like especially guillotine, this honey honey out in the sea, it forms a boat. I like that. I'm pretty happy with it. This one here, even like it's, uh, it's okay. I'm not, I like this poster, this La Tigre one, but looking back, like, I don't love how the types incorporated it in it. It's okay, but it's not, it doesn't feel as like in the image like some of the other ones do. Like this camera one where it's written around the lens, that's where you would expect to see type on a camera. In here, it's not where you would expect it, but having the pentagram with the, it makes like a composition that I like over the planet. Um, in the Japan droids, I do like how the type kind of forms buildings. Here it's smoke. This one, again, it's kind of like laid over top, but I, I like it still. I always try and think of ways to incorporate type into the image so it looks like it's a part of it and not just slapped on top. So if we take maybe a sample of this text. So we're looking at um, I want to start from here. Read in between the line of the crime scene. Or JB propaganda for the military complex. Same gun shot Terry at West. Same gun shot Samir at West Bank. We all think the Super Bowl is the best thing. <sighs> okay, so this is great. It's a lot of copy. It's a little more of a passage than I normally like. I mean, some of them are up there, but and like, it's very topical. I could take this whole package. I don't think I need the Scooby-Doo line. I think you can, you don't have to make the comparison. I think Scooby-Doo almost takes it away. So if we say the ghosts, they're talking about, I see the signs, read between the lines of the crime scene, propaganda for the military in the same gun, shot Lil Terry, same gun that shots. Okay, who is Lil Terry? Who is Lil Terry? We're gonna find this out. You guys, I hope you're yelling at me, being like, you should know. Does Lil Terry show up in here? Uh, 
Let's see. Thankfully. Back to people in the US and those are like yeah. Military Lupe Fiasco song Little Weapon, which two lines is constructed around the premise that the American military industrial complex creates gun violence across cultural and natural boundaries. Damn, okay. Oh, Lupe Fiasco, amazing. Okay, Lil Terry got a gun from the store. He bought it with the money he got from his chores. He robbed the candy shop. So, uh, is amazing this is about this is along those same lines about like violence uh that happens like in america with american people and how it's you know connected to the military industrial complex this is awesome okay the super bowl is the best thing I like this line in the context of the song, but something about it, it's like almost too obvious in this poster for some reason. I like it. Like on one hand, it like makes it clear that this is the super, like a thing like that. But like, I think I'm kind of leaning towards leaning, keeping that last line out. I think it says enough here. We're going to edit this to this. We already... Like NFL or Jay-Z, we know what's going on here. Um, maybe, and that's maybe an assumption I'm making as a, as a designer here. But I have the luxury of designing for one person right now. And I know Chris is definitely smart enough and aware enough to know what the heck we're talking about here. So the first things first, I just get this text in here. I might rearrange this whatever in whatever way possible, but I just want to get it in here. I'm going to not even worry about the font too much. Maybe play with some size. I'm going to increase that size to something somewhat substantial. We might reduce some of the words here even more. I'm going to just, oh, you know what? I just thought of a font that is awesome. I don't think I... I just have to open up my right font here and install it. I bought this font, this entire font family, probably, I don't know, 13 years ago. And I've, I'm always looking for excuses to use it, but it is um, House Industries uh, United. Oops, that's my sample text. Uh, if I search United, where are you? All fonts. Okay, so I bought this whole package for I don't know how much at the time, like probably like eight hundred dollars or something. <laughs> and I, like at the time, even they didn't even have a web font version. I don't know if House still does how does web versions. Maybe they do. They're not cheap, but this is a massive family. I spend a lot on it. I really want to use it, and I look for excuse. I've been <laughs> looking for excuses to use it for years. But this is perfect. It's kind of like this very industrial, chunky set of faces. And it also, so A, it works with the military stuff real strong. And B, it's kind of got like this sort of like uh, varsity kind of campus feel, especially with, I find, the serif version of it. Um, I'm just going to activate like a bunch of these I'm gonna get into they've got some like stencil versions too that are really really cool um, you can't even see the stencils in there but we'll, we'll check them out got some condensed like if we look yeah I'll try the sands as well songs songs Canadian I'm Canadian so I see sands <laughs> Okay, so we've got this. We're gonna try some United. Oh my God. Okay, here we go. Usually, it's 
pretty good. Yeah, okay, here we go. United. So I'm going to go with... Hell, let's try Stetzel. Go crazy. Full on. Let's start with the extremes. Sometimes I like to do that. And we're just going to, like, blow it up big. Oh, man. I love it. Already. Like, I'm not... I, this is nowhere near the design, but like for some reason, like this font on here just works for me. It's working for me. It like feels militaristic. It feels kind of like it. It's like it was made for this kind of thing. Um, there's a lot we got to do with the typography here to make it tight and look good and in place. But just to get the words on there, to see it in a font that kind of like makes sense. Let's even look at, I'm curious now. Let's look at house. Oh, it's housey. I, I haven't been on the site for years. Okay. Let's dig in here. Um, yeah. Fonts. Design and fonts. These were once upon a time, back in the days, like I used to work at Veer and it was like these guys were the, Veer was great. It was cool. Lots of people loved their fonts. They were very beloved. House was like the other one and they have always marched to the beat of their own drum and I I love them. They're amazing, amazing faces as well. Um, especially they're just, it's just displaced type mostly, I, I think. But where is United? Are these alphabetical? No course not oh my god i kind of hate sometimes when they just use one character as their thing like don't they know i'm streaming and i'm talking and oh my god and they got this broken out into different ones so i'm just let's talk we'll go to the about so like most military action we're talking military united started out as a simple typographic incursion that became entrenched in the house into industries quagmire of creative projects after we used early versions and a clothing company logo, it drew national attention, selected to the Smithsonian's Computer National Design Museum. Okay, yes, whatever. Tal Lemming, original content, they post three different styles. Okay, so they, you'll appreciate the ability to switch from expressive billboard layout to emo band spread without changing font families. Shop. Yes, it is a powerhouse. There's so many ways to use this. I wish they had more, like, specimens of how it could be used but that's okay i think i think united fits this concept we're gonna play with it it might be different ways my god it is 11 o'clock my time a.m it is probably let's see in the west it is uh nine seven p six, what time is it eight p.m it's getting late y'all um I got to get some other work done today, but like, this is a good start. I think, I think we got some stuff here. I need to think about this a little bit, put some like brain thought in. We're going to come back to this. I think, I know, like I got one viewer here <laughs> probably. Um, I don't care. I had some friends pop by and say, hi, uh, I'm having fun ranting. I'm just going to do this. I don't care. Doing this out in the open is going to sit on my YouTube channel. I don't know. If you want to, like, hang by, hit the subscribe button. Is that what people say? And like it, whatever. Talk to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this again later. So uh, that's it. I love you for watching this and uh, come and indulging me in this weird experiment. I want to talk more about politics, design, music, how it all combines. I want to talk about things like this often and this seems like a fun channel to do it maybe we can once i get used to this streaming software we can i can bring in some guests and like talk through some of these concepts but uh i think i'm going to start doing these on my mondays and in, for mo for most of my friends and stuff in the in america and canada this means usually like Sunday evenings. So I think this might be a fun Sunday evening activity for y'all and a good Monday morning one for me. So that's, I'm going to aim for a Monday at around the same time, 6 p.m. or Sunday, 6 p.m.
Pacific. It was like my 9 a.m. in Bali time. So I look forward to seeing you all then. Uh, thank you so much for this. I hope you like it. Goodbye.